What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about different ways to add water to your Lumion renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So yesterday we talked a little bit about the uh, terrain editing tools within Lumion. In this case today I want to talk about how to add water into your renderings. And so the first thing to know is what I've done is I've actually started a blank mountain range file and then I've gone in and I've turned the grass off and so we talked about this a little bit yesterday but turning the grass off means that you're not rendering all these different blades of grass and uh, using your computer's processing power on things that aren't important so in order to find the water functions you're gonna go over into the landscape section of Lumion so you're gonna click on this and you're gonna have these little options down here and in the terrain editing video which I'll link to down below um, you click on this first option in order to add terrain into your model or into your rendering so now I want to talk about these water options and how you can add water to Lumion and so there, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. The first way you can do this is there's actually a button in here for water. And so if you click on that, and then you click the button for place object and click just out here in space somewhere, basically this is going to bring in a water plane. And you can see if I get to the same level as that, it doesn't have any thickness associated with it. It's literally just a plane of water. And then when you kind of mouse over it, you're going to get these options for stretch, so you can adjust the size of the water as well as up and down. So you can use this to move this up and down inside your rendering. And so it's pretty easy to place this water. And one thing to note is it's not really like a rocket science, super, uh, super in-depth placement process. You basically put it where it looks good. Um, and in this case, that means you can do a few different things with that. So the first thing you can do is let's say for example that I wanted to create something like a mountain lake or something like that. I could click and drag this out then I could move this down until it's below the ground plane and when it's below the ground plane it's not going to show up anymore but it's still there in the 3D space. Well what that allows me to do is that allows me to use the uh, that allows me to use the terrain editing tools to move the land around this space down and so I'm going to undo that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my brush size really small. I'm going to turn my brush speed down and I'm just going to click a couple times. And you can see how when I click a couple times, what this does is this moves the ground around this uh, water down. And then once we move the ground down, then the water kind of shows through and you can use this to simulate a lake effect. And I think what I want to do in this case is I'm actually going to... I'm going to adjust this water and I'm going to make it really big. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to mess around with this a little bit more. So you can see how I'm able to basically come in here and one of the cool things about this is if you make the if you make the ground deeper, then you get like a darker water view. So you can see how with that darker water view, you can tell that this gets a little bit t deeper in different areas, that kind of thing. So you can use this to basically generate a lake. And one of the things about this is you can also adjust the type of water that's in here. So you can click on this button right here and you can adjust the type. And what the type does is that'll bring in different looks for your water. And I'm actually gonna move this down just a little bit so that we don't have stuff showing through you can see how you can make these different looks depending on what you're trying to do. And one thing, it's probably a good idea to come in here with the paint material options and paint some rock and some other stuff around your edges to make things look a little bit more realistic. So you can see how I could come in here and I could paint different things around these edges to make this look a little bit more like a real lake. Um, but you can see how these adjustments are really easy to make. And again, there's a bunch of different kinds. So there's ice, so you can make this look like it's actually ice. And then you can make the, uh, and then you can come in here and you can adjust the overall landscape as well. So if you wanted this to be kind of snowy, you could make lakes that way. You can do a lot of different things using these presets and using these functions. So let's go back. This will work for right now. So and then one of the other things you can do is you can also, um, let's bring in an example object. So I'm going to go into my object section and I'm just going to click in here and we'll bring in, 
Let's go ahead and just bring in the Farnsworth house model that uh, gets brought in along with this. It's not going to be perfect, but we can go ahead and use it for this example. So what you can do in a lot of cases, and what would be ideal in this model, what I would really like is for this to be moved down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, because what you could do is, let's say you have something like a pool, for example, and you wanted to bring in, we'll go ahead and we'll use the mountain preset. So let's say you wanted to have a pool right here well, what you could do is you could bring in this plane and you could set it to the same size as whatever your pool would be. And I realize this isn't really set up to be a pool right now, but what you would do is you would set this at the height of the top of the pool and that would kind of show through and that would allow you to simulate the pool space using just this flat plane. So, and obviously having this uh, this stone going up isn't really helping us with that, but if you wanted to generate a pool look, you could definitely do that using this function as well. That's kind of how you can place planes of water inside your rendering, but now I want to talk a, a little bit about the ocean function. And one of the things I really like about the ocean function is if you wanted to, instead of having to place this water plane in here, you could actually just turn on the ocean. And so the way the ocean works is you can click right here and you'll notice when you first open this up, there's nothing here. So there's no ocean or anything like that. Well, you can click this button for ocean on and off. When you click the button for ocean on and off, that's gonna bring in water everywhere inside your rendering. So basically every tile on this map has water below it. And so what I like about this is, first of all, this is fully editable. So you can adjust how intense the waves are out here. You can make this look really smooth, uh, really rough. You can also adjust um, you can adjust kind of the way that light is affected coming off of this. And then the other thing you can do And then you can also add wind. And so when you add wind, you can adjust which way the water appears to be flowing. So if I click and drag this, for example, you can see how this is kind of turning. And uh, to make this a little bit more visible, what you wanna do is you wanna turn up the wind speed because when you turn up the wind speed, that makes the water move more as if the wind was blowing a lot. Well then, you can set this water to move whatever direction you want to. We're going to use that in a second because you can do a few different things with that as well. And so you can adjust the way that all of this looks, but you can also adjust the height of the water. So I can click and drag this and you can see how if I get this to uh, like a negative value, it no longer shows up. So that means that the ocean is turned on and it's down here, but it's below this ground plane. And if you remember, you can hold the shift key and click and drag in order to do a fine adjustment. So you can use this to put this just below your ground plane. And so if you remember before what we did in order to create our lake was we put a plane of water in the ground. Well, this is gonna function the same way. So if I was to come in here and Let's say I had a larger brush and I was to lower the ground. That ocean is actually in the ground. And I don't know why I have a water plane here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So you can see how as I move this down, this means the ocean is down below this point. So you can basically make lakes however and wherever you want to. So I could just keep moving this across here to make a bigger lake and it's really easy to do that. And uh, so I kind of like the way the foam shows up in here. It's probably a little bit realistic. So you might want to maybe bring that down a little bit. Bring your wind speed down as well. So that's an easy way to create a mountain lake or any kind of lake using the ocean function. So the other thing you could do with this if you wanted to is you could also use it to create a river. If you remember, this water is sitting right below the ground plane. Well, if I was to come in here and I was to lower this along a long stretch like this, we can actually use that wind speed to make the water move the way that we want it to move. So right now in the ocean settings, everything's kind of set, kind of light. Well, if you wanted to simulate the movement of a river, you could turn your wind speed up and you can see how when you turn your wind speed up, this gives more of a like flowing water look to it. Then 
you could adjust your wind direction in the direction that you want your river to flow. And this is a really good way to kind of simulate the flow of a river inside your model. So and you could come in here and you could add objects, like let's say you wanted to add some random rocks or something like that. We could just come into our add objects, we could find rocks, and we could start adding those in our river. And one thing we could do if we really wanted to is we could actually use the mass placement tool in order to kind of randomly place those inside our river. And so we could adjust the number of items, we could randomize the direction, randomize the spacing, and even if we wanted to, we could add a couple different object objects in that row to kind of randomize it up. So we could make everything look a little bit more like it's kind of random rocks sitting in the middle of a river. So and you can adjust the number of items just by using this slider. And then you could click the checkbox. You could also come in here and you could adjust the height of these. So if you wanted to move them up and down so they're actually in the water, giving you a little bit more of a random look, you could do that as well. And then the final thing I want to talk about is you can also apply materials to be water. So let's go back to our Farnsworth house model. It's not the ideal example, but it'll do for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out the water plane that I added to this face. I'm just going to go back into my landscape. I'm going to click on water and I'm going to click delete object and click on this point. That'll delete this water out. And I wish this was set up a little bit differently, but uh, it'll, it'll work for what we're trying to do here. So what you can do is you can go into the paint materials section, which we'll talk a little bit more about in another video, but you can actually And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over into the materials section on the left hand side. If you click on the materials section, you can select any material in here and you can change its properties. Well, one of the properties, if we click on this floor stone, for example, that you can adjust is you can go into custom and you can make this a water material. And so when you make this a water material, basically it's going to make it so that anywhere where that uh, stone tile object is, it's going to make that look like water. And you can adjust the scale of the waves to make it look like different things. So in this case, I'm kind of moving it down. You can adjust the height of those waves. So if you wanted this to look really smooth, you could do that as well. You could adjust how much it reflects the light. There's a lot of different things you could do with this material. You could make it foamy or not. So you can definitely apply a water as a material as well as doing it using the landscape settings off to the left hand side. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Have you been using water in your Lumion renderings? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Um, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.